In the sound design phase, we were doing sound design with meters that give us a decibel rating, DBFS, decibels relative to full scale. The full scale is the zero in your DAW. So you know how we don't go above zero or it's peaked, it's toast, right? Well, decibels relative to full scale, the zero is full scale. So if you say it's minus 16 dB, it's, it's 16 below full scale. Why it's like that, I have no idea. That's for sound geeks. For me as a director, I just need to know how it works. So with that, when we're in the mix phase, we will continue using some of those meters for specific purposes. However, we're also gonna begin using the loudness meters in Fairlight and they measure, some of them measure in LUFs, loudness units relative to full scale. So what's the difference between a loudness unit and a decibel? Decibels, decibels are very accurate and it's the amplitude of that sound, however you say it, but a loudness unit is trying to take human perception into account. For example, Remember back in sound design when we were using an EQ, right? And we have that wide range of frequencies. So sounds can sit in different areas of a frequency. Well, humans respond different to different frequencies. So if I took two sounds and put them at the same exact decibel, but I put one sound in a lower frequency and one sound up in a higher frequency, and then played them back to back to someone, they're gonna say, oh, that, that one was louder or that one was quieter because we react to frequencies differently, but they're technically the same decibel. So loudness units are trying to take things like this into account. And then you use loudness units to get what we call an integrated loudness rating for our film. An integrated loudness rating is measured in, in loudness units and it's an average from beginning to end of our loudness, okay? In platforms like Netflix, theaters, YouTube, they all want this, they have specifications for it. And with that, they also have specifications for what's called true peak. So instead of DBFS, it's DBTP, okay? And true peak, what, here's what that's about. DB, you know, it's the amplitude of the signal, but when a digital signal leaves and goes through a digital to audio converter, a DAC, and it hits an analog speaker, sometimes it goes up a little bit. There's, there's an increase in, vo in volume. So DBTP, true peak, is doing some oversampling to account for that, to protect gear, to protect ears, etc. So all of these platforms say, hey, we want content to be no more than this true peak, and we want your integrated loudness rating to be here, okay? So for example, Netflix. Netflix is a true peak of minus two, and their integrated loudness rating is minus 27 LUFs. So, and that's, if you notice, that's kind of a big span, minus 27 down from full scale, is a lot, it's a big dynamic range. Dynamic range, remember, is our soft to our loud, just like with cameras, it's bright to dark, so that's the dynamic range in audio is soft to loud parts of that piece. So compare that to YouTube. YouTube has the same minus two dp. Actually, it's technically 1.5, but essentially the same. But their LUFs, their average is minus 14. Their integrated loudness rating is minus 14. So that's a big difference. Why? Well, Netflix is allowing for a very big dynamic range in, in a way, whereas YouTube is squashing that down, which tells me that they, they want things loud on their platform, right? People are watching on phones, watching on computers, not necessarily going to YouTube for a cinematic experience necessarily. So if I took two, if I took a movie and I prepared it for Netflix and met their specs and I prepared it for YouTube, and I didn't watch it on Netflix and watch it on YouTube, I just took the QuickTime files and then compared them on a TV, TV with stereo speakers, you're gonna, it's gonna sound different. Because to meet the YouTube specs, we might be compressing things down a little bit, whereas the Netflix specs just treat things in a different manner. So we're gonna focus on delivering for YouTube right now. And the, the good news about that is once you know how to do it for one, you can just change things for others in the future. So let's jump into Fairlight, and we're gonna set Fairlight up for YouTube, and I'm gonna show you some other things, and then we're gonna look at how to get the integrated sound rating and check True Peak for your film. Let's do it. Welcome back to Fairlight. So the first thing we're gonna to do to prepare this for YouTube is go to our project settings, and then on Fairlight on the left, look for target loudness level. Yours will probably say minus 27 or something like that. Change it to minus 14, okay? I'll show you what this affects in a second. Go ahead and save. And then let's look at our meters down here in the lower right. You can drag that out, just get the double arrow there and click and drag. And it's only gonna go out so far, but you can scroll with your mouse to go over if you have tracks that aren't showing. And then if you go to the three dot menu here, 
you can switch them over to small tracks. So if you have a ton of tracks you want to see more at once without having to scroll, that's an option. So these channel strips mimic the huge mixing console that a re-recording mixer will mix your film at, right? So we've got effects and different things here, and we're gonna look at some of this stuff as it pertains to us. And then over here we have bus. And right now I just have one bus. We're gonna talk about buses in another lesson, but just know that all of our tracks go through bus one. If I were to mute bus one, we wouldn't hear any sound. See, even though I'm playing and I have levels here, nothing's coming out. Whereas if I unmute it, okay? Now something we need to do on our mixing console here is set all of these to Unity. So let's say I had tracks at different volume levels. In sound design, we were doing clip-based work, but in case you came in here and changed anything, we need to set them to Unity by double-clicking on them. What that means is there's no gain or attenuation happening to the signal that's passing through here, okay? Let's scoot that back, and now we're going to look at our loudness meter. So this is the meter that shows us measurements in loudness units. Here's our control room, which shows true peak. And then these meters here are decibels relative to full scale, okay? And all of these are monitoring bus one. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is hit the three dot menu and you want absolute scale checked and then BS 1770-4 for the standard. Absolute scale is all about what we see here. So see with that set, I'm at minus 14 up here, which is my target value that we set in our project settings. If I were to uncheck that, there we have our zero full scale normal look. But the problem is it does some kind of funky thing where it looks at your target value and then shows you stuff relative to that. It doesn't show you what's accurately going on here. I don't know why it's like that, but just set it to absolute scale and you'll see exactly what's going on. Okay, so if I play, I'll start to get some readings. But if I reset this so I clear my meter out and click start, let's just do this. Okay, I'm gonna stop it, pause. Okay, so now we have readings here. What are these about? Well, short shows you the loudness units over the last 30 seconds. Now, this isn't gonna be accurate because we didn't play 30 seconds worth, but it shows you that 30 second average. So it's helpful if you were trying to troubleshoot what section might be too loud, since it's an average, because integrated shows you the entire average, okay? So we've got 30 second average, We've got the max that happened in this 30 second average, but again, this, neither of these are correct until I do a 30 second sampling. Range, this is our loudness range. We talk about this in another lesson because it's specific to loudness delivery. And then again, here's our integrated loudness rating for what I just played. This does not tell me what's going on in the whole timeline, and we need to know what's going on for our whole timeline when we deliver to YouTube or any other platform. And we talk about the specifics of that in another lesson, okay? But just kind of know what these meters are telling you. True peak here, and then we've got decibels relative to full scale here. So these two meters don't save values like these do. In fact, this is momentary loudness, and this is measured in loudness units, and this doesn't save either. We just have to play to see these things. Now notice the difference. We've talked about how loudness units work, right? And I don't know the in, all the ins and outs of the momentary meter, okay? But I just know it's loudness units. And so if you watch bus one and look at the DBFS rating and then watch this, they're different. See, this is a lot higher than what this is showing. So that's interesting. Okay, so as a recap, we've got our mixers down here. We need to set them to unity. And then we've got our loudness meter, momentary loudness meter, these are in loudness units, true peak, and then our DBFS decibels relative to full scale here. We set our project under Fairlight to our target for YouTube. If we were delivering to Netflix, we change this to minus 27. And then to get an integrated loudness rating for our film, we'd have to go to the beginning of the timeline. And I wouldn't start on the bars and tone, but actually go to the beginning of the footage and then click reset, start, and then play the film and you gotta let it play all the way to the end and then stop it, and then you'll have an accurate integrated loudness rating for your film. But don't do that yet because there's another way to do it that's a little easier, and there's some other information you might wanna get. We're gonna cover all this in the loudness lesson. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, you should check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co. Because if you came to me right now and said, hey, I wanna make movies, what should I do? I would say one thing. You need to learn the craft from development 
through post-production, but learn it for very little money spent. And that's gonna do two huge things for you. Number one, as a, a starting out director, you've gotta know how to do everything because unless you have thousands of dollars in the bank to pay crew, you're gonna be waiting on people to help you and that's not a good plan to move forward. You need to be able to push the needle on your career so that if your gaffer doesn't show up because they got a paid gig, you know how to light, etc. So I teach you everything. From development through pre-production, production, and post-production, you will learn how to do it all. And then I teach you for very little cost so that you can take the money, the thousands of dollars you didn't spend on traditional film school, and you can buy the equipment you need to continue making movies after this first thesis film, because you make a thesis film during the training. And this is huge because a problem with modern film schools is you go, like the film school I went to had, you had access to all kinds of gear, cinema cameras, sound stages, Fisher dollies, you name it, they had it. But the problem with that is, is when you graduate, you lose access to all that gear. So you're on the streets of LA, you may, have a, you may have been a directing major, so you've got a thesis film, but then that's it. And the film industry doesn't care about that. You have to continue making movies, but it's on your dime, all right? So my goal is to help you realize your dreams faster than I did, because if you don't plan for those expenses, you can, you can put years of delay into your pursuit of the craft, and I don't want that to be you. WriteDirect.co, check it out. I hope to see you there, and if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon.